why are you the right person to be LA's next mayor? I'm the right person to be the mayor of Los Angeles because I'm the only candidate with specific, effective, accomplished executive leadership experience right here in Los Angeles to come into the mayor's office on that first day, shake up the status quo and get things done. I've been a lawmaker, a legislator, and I've been an executive. A lawmaker, as my opponents have been, has a vote, has an opinion. An executive, as I've been a city attorney, has to set key priorities and then manage to effectuate those priorities and everything from how the sanitation department operates to how LAPD polices. And I've had that experience and displayed great success in that role. It, it may be trite to say, but the motivation for me to run is because the city is confronting the convergence of so many crises at the same time. And we've never been in this situation before. Uh, you know, there are typical issues that we confront transportation, education, and so on. But now we have a homelessness emergency. I don't mean that in a sloganeering way. We'll dive into the depth of what that means in a second, not a problem. We have a housing crisis. It's not an issue, it's a crisis. We have the pandemic, which has caused the well-known health impacts across our, our city, but also had a devastating impact on small businesses throughout Los Angeles. We have public safety issues that are real with gun violence up 53% in Los Angeles, especially in South Los Angeles, that is a critical issue. And all these issues are coming together at once. And I, the crucial question I would suggest for you and for voters is, at this moment of crisis, unparalleled in my history as an adult here, which candidate has the proven record of accomplishment as an executive in public service, who has a command of those issues, who can step in and do that right off the bat, because we don't have time to waste. That question defines the reason for my candidacy and the reason I'm the distinctive candidate in this race. And I'll be a mayor who, in your words from your editorial endorsing me for reelection, who sets the standard for future mayors to follow. You talk about shaking up the status quo. You've been the second most powerful citywide official in LA for nine years. You are the status quo. How do you not bear responsibility for what the city is experiencing now? So first of all, I absolutely take responsibility for everything that I have any authority over. But one of the key reasons I'm running for mayor is on the city council, I was in charge of the budget. I had policy making authority and I handled that so well that no one ran against me when I ran for reelection. Only time in the fifth district for like 60 years that that's happened. Policy making authority, great, I love that. But running for mayor gives me the opportunity to combine the executive authority that I've been able with great success to wield as city attorney with my policy making and budgetary skills that I've been able to display for years prior to this. So all well, those things over which I have authority that I can have some semblance of control over even with my effort to expand the role of city attorney, yep, I'm responsible for those things. But as mayor, I have the authority to do that which I've never been able to do as city attorney. And you've seen that, that piece I referred to was an example of my frustration. You can imagine what it took for me to put on your audit page my frustrations over my long months, years long efforts to get the attention of City Hall to recognize that this process that we're engaged in on homelessness wasn't working. Finally, I had to do it publicly, but I couldn't vote on it and I couldn't direct it. But to be real about it and answer your question, there are aspects of government in the city, core aspects of policy and budget that I can't control now as mayor I can. All right, what would be your first action to address the city's homelessness crisis? On my first day, I'm going to declare a state of emergency on homelessness. It gives the mayor additional executive authority, and it also galvanizes the public. I'm going to create a single point of contact in the mayor's office, a top deputy who consolidates all the authority of the mayor's office, which oversees every department of the city, responsible to reporting directly to me with concrete goals. And this is indicative of how I'm going to approach every issue in Los Angeles, every key issue. I'm going to dispense with organizing the city around fragmented leadership and make sure on homelessness, on safety, on sustainability, and all these issues, the mayor's office is organized across these artificial jurisdictional lines to get the goals accomplished that we need. So 
single uh, state of emergency, top person in charge in City Hall, strike team in City Hall to make sure that every general manager, if they want to keep their job, is reducing the time it takes to cite and approve housing for people experiencing homelessness. And concrete goals for diminishing street homelessness year over year by changing our paradigm on the street for street engagement and working closely with the county on mental health and substance abuse and ensuring we have a prevention strategy that prevents folks from falling into homelessness at rates higher than we can house them. In your plans on homelessness, you said that you would establish a strike team to work on getting uh, permanent housing built or created faster and cheaper. How would that work? So I have talked to multiple private and nonprofit, for-profit and nonprofit affordable housing uh, developers. And they all say the same thing to me. City Hall pretends that there's concierge service for us. There's not. Everyone says, you know, building and safety does okay. Engineering is a problem. Water and power hookups take too damn long and so forth. When I'm mayor, I'm going to say there are 10 general managers who touch the siding and approval of homeless and affordable housing. I'm going to say to them, this goes to Kerry's question, by the way, about how much delegation and how much hands-on one engages in. One sets goals for one's team. And this goal is going to be, if you don't cut the time it takes to site and approve that housing, someone else would do your job. Because when it comes to, you know, Carla, you wrote that in an editorial recently, yeah, everyone talks about emergency and, and everyone talks about FEMA-like response. There's a big difference in this campaign between who's been leading on those issues and who's been following. Let me say this. In the same piece I wrote in 2018, I think, I said we should be pressing to convert motels into homeless housing. It was an idea that I first proposed a year and a half before. And in City Hall, even without legislative authority, I was able to propose and work with the mayor's office to push through the city council, a law that made it easier for motel owners, this right. is maybe five years ago now, to convert motels into homeless housing. Because I thought it was much cheaper. There are two words that matter here, cheaper and faster. It was it's much cheaper to convert existing infrastructure right. And my office has dealt with a lot of those motels, which are often nuisances in communities. There wouldn't be the same pushback from neighborhoods. You already have the thing right there. So let's do it. Would I commandeer? If, if, if we have an emergency, if there were recalcitrant owners of motels, for example, and it were obvious to me that the per unit cost of converting those units was substantially cheaper than building ground up and it could be done faster, and that recalcitrance was unreasonable, would I commandeer? Yep, I would. Now, what does commandeering look like? It requires paying fair market value. Right. So I'm not talking about taking it and abusing someone's property rights. I am saying it costs about $147,000 of your tax dollars to contribute to each Triple H unit that's being produced. As you know, the $600,000 right. is a product of four versions of that. That's roughly the same cost of converting a motel room into a unit in, per in perpetuity that someone experiencing homelessness can inhabit. Okay. What's the right size of the Los Angeles Police Department force and why? I was the first candidate in this race to pledge to increase the police department to at least 10,000 officers. We need to be increasing the force because we need to have quicker response times from the police department to incidents in people's neighborhoods. And also because more officers enable us to respond to crime hotspots with more success. I think we need to couple that expansion in a well-trained and substantial police force that is diverse and has more college-educated officers in it with reforms. And those reforms include severing from the department the responsibility for intervening in mental health crises on the street with an armed response instead of having crisis response teams do that. Embedding officers for five-year stints in neighborhoods to earn the trust and respect of communities they serve. I have a strong view that we need to be an, an enhancing training to de-escalate violent confrontation in the force. We should have civilian ambassadors being the first point of contact for anyone entering a police station to make that experience more user-friendly. And I think it's imperative that we couple these expansions and reforms in LAPD with a series of community-based strategies because police can't do it by themselves. And those strategies involve everything from violence interruption and intervention to after school programs, job training, and neighborhood cleanup. All right. What's an example of something you've done that wasn't popular, but was the right thing to do? So when I was a city council member, 
Uh, my predecessor had approved a location in a uh, community in Sherman Oaks uh, for market rate condominiums, for 35 market rate condominiums. I had just been elected and I had finished my term as the director of that Setic Legal Service that does free legal work for senior citizens, people who are disabled. And I knew in that community, there was a huge demand for affordable housing for seniors. I said to the developer, instead of 35 market rate units, if you work with me and create 84 senior housing units, you'll have my support. And the developer agreed to do that. Neighbors in the surrounding single family community were very unhappy. First, they were concerned about traffic implications. I made sure that we showed them that there'd be less traffic by counting cars at similar locations. They were concerned about parking in the neighborhood. I changed parking on site to prevent that from being an issue. They were concerned about the aesthetics of the building. I, I got the developer to agree for a neighborhood community uh, input into those aesthetics. Bottom line is at the end of the day, the, after going through every legitimate concern, there were neighbors who said, we're worried our property values will decline. I said, I disagree, that's gonna happen. And recall petitions began to circulate in that neighborhood. At the end of the day, there was no recall. I ran for re-election with no opposition. The building got built and 84 seniors were occupying a space they never would have had before. And property values haven't decreased. Uh, not not at all. Los Angeles has had a contradictory policies on street vending. On the one hand, sort of legalizing it and saying we support it. And then on the other hand, ticketing and, and citing street vendors. Uh, who are operating in difficult circumstances. How would you as mayor sort of address that complexity and, and just make it, would you sort of make it easier for street vendors to work in LA? So the answer is, I think we need clarity and consistency. There is an approach that is on the books that requires street vendors to get permits, to have health validation, and um, to limit the number of them competing with brick and mortar restaurants and stores that are right next to where they are. Uh, and so there's some disbursement throughout the city and no brick and mortar community is bearing the brunt of that competition in ways that aren't fair to those people who are paying rent and so on. Um, I, as mayor, I want to assure that that approach, which is sought to be balanced, is put in place. So I think the answer is it, that, that right now, there's really no approach. We have this, the, the, um, a construct in place that's not being adhered to. And that's a problem. Um, but I also think I'm, I'm very sensitive to both, there are both two sides here. I'm very sensitive to the brick and mortar restaurant, uh, restaurateur who says, I gotta pay rent, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. And I can't sell, fill in the blank, um, you know, that lobster roll, that taco, whatever it is, for a price point that enables me to compete with someone who has none of that overhead and none of those obligations. So again, health certification, taxes, limitations of the competition in a block. Those are all features of where I would come from on that. One word answers. Should LA tax million dollar real estate transactions to raise money for affordable housing? Yes or no? Not now. No, okay. Roughly, what's the median income for a household in LA? Roughly 60 to $70,000. About 62,000 in 2019. Metro is considering enacting congestion pricing on local roads and freeways to reduce gridlock and fund more transit or even free transit. Would you support a congestion pricing pilot project in LA as mayor? Yes or no? I, it, it requires a little more answer, Carrie. Not until there is a more mature public transit system built out. Um, forgive the more expansive answer, but not, not at this point. Okay. Uh, Mayor Garcetti set a goal of eliminating traffic deaths by 2025, but he hasn't followed through and traffic deaths have increased. Would you commit to make Vision Zero a reality during your tenure as mayor? Yes or no? Yes. Digital billboards, would you support having more, the same number as now, or fewer? Fewer. All right. Thank you. Well, good luck in the campaign. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate the opportunity.